Oh, you're welcome to the programme. Well, this can be a time of year when people struggle and a new way to help those with depression or low mood is being rolled out around the country by the HSE. It's called social prescribing and it's been trialled in Donegal over the past eight years. Our reporter Niall Martin has been meeting some of those people who have found it to be beneficial. What a fantastic place to retire to. Bunnagee in North County Donegal. For most of his adult life, George O'Doherty lived abroad. But five years ago, he moved back to his home area to live in the bungalow he built in the 1990s. I can hear the ocean all night and my bedroom window, which is there. And what do you call it? The, the, I love it. It's just, it's heaven on earth. Absolutely heaven on earth. We've all had our lockdown projects, and this is George's, his indoor-outdoor space. I'm trying to recreate an old country cottage from, from my youth. Uh, when they, I couldn't locate a, a settled bed, and if I can get one, I can assure you it will be in there. Um, I have some stuff that I acquired over the years from, from the Middle East. These old plates that would come out of some of these old flat cottages years ago, I had them in the loft and said, well, why are they in the loft, you know? Soon after returning to Donegal, George fell into a depression. The glamorous life traipsing around the world had ended and now he was left with just himself. I, I just felt I didn't fit in anymore, even though um, I knew I, I'd be into a spiritual way of living. And the, I was getting duller and duller and darker and darker and deeper and deeper in my, in my head. And I went to the doctor one day. I, I refused to take pills. And I went to the doctor, uh, my local doctor, Mulberry Surgery and Con, and they said, well, have you heard of social prescribing? At that point, I didn't even know it existed. And, of course, uh, she, they explained sort of briefly what it was about. And gave me a number, contacted it, and had a meeting with the, the, the lady who works in it. And from there, I haven't looked back because they put forward all sorts of uh, things going on in the community, groups to join, things to do, and, um, you know, volunteer. I did some volunteer teaching. But it got me out of that hole. Social prescribing takes feeling depressed out of the medical world and into the social arena. Yeah, it started uh, in, in Mayo actually and in Donegal, but Donegal was the first county that had an almost county-wide spread of, of social prescribing. And that's back in 2012. And since then, it's uh, been growing steadily, really, in many parts of the, of the country, to the point now where there's over 30 sites of social prescribing in, in Ireland at the moment. A few years ago, social prescribing mentor Mary met Marie and helped her get her life back on track. I had retired, you know yourself, yes. and I had a health scare, kind of on the one year, same year, and that made me retire early. Yes. So um, I was again at home and not doing a lot, recovering, and at the same time looking after my mum, who passed away a few years later then. And that's, I think that's when I got in contact with yourself through my daughter, Anita. Mary was the friendly face who worked with Marie to get her mojo back. What I always say about social prescribing, when friends and family ask me about it, you know, I'll say, if you go to the nurse or the doctor, they'll say, what's the matter? When you come to us, we say, what matters? So just taking out that, the, you know, so what matters? What is it that matters now in your life? And Marie at the time talked about, you know, being bereaved and retired and different things. And then once you get past that, different things will matter. So uh, it's a journey. I did this, yeah. Surprisingly, I did this. <laughs> I took this from a postcard, copied from a postcard. Now, it's not exactly the same, but it's not far off. <laughs> I never thought I could actually draw anything that you could present to anybody, you know, that kind of way. I never thought I would be able to paint a picture, you know, that you could actually put into a frame. These days, George swims, walks and hikes regularly with local groups and friends. He's absolutely messianic about how social prescribing can work. If I hadn't have discovered the, um, 
social prescribing and getting to getting you know knowing that you're not unique you're not alone there are other people uh, and at this particular moment i could not be in a better place definitely couldn't and i i also tell everybody about it i i i am an absolute enthusiast for it i see people walking around on their own and they're walking dead within if they join groups the 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 group uh, therapy, the group dynamic, give, get, gives you that joie de vie, something to look forward to every day. I couldn't be in a better place. I love it here, absolutely. What a great project, which, like so many others, has come under strain during the pandemic, but hopefully will be expanding further in the not-too-distant future. Next, we head to the Banner County to meet a group of women who are very proud of County Clare. Valerie Larkin, who's from Ennis, wanted to highlight the best features of the county in a textile project called the Clare Quilt. Zainab Boladale met her and some of the other women who are involved. It's a winter morning here in the pavilion in Liston Varna. Arriving early to add some finishing touches are some of the 25 women who've been pushing their craft skills to good use. It's all for a project called the Clare Quilt. This project is the result of a mad idea I had in May because I was bored silly and there are 60 squares on it and each square is 10 inches but then you have the borders so it's just 10 foot wide and 6 foot long. Originally from Finglas in Dublin, Valerie Larkin moved to Clare 15 years ago. Over the years, she has explored the many natural and historical attractions the county has to offer and wanted to show how much they are appreciated. These are places that impressed me when I saw them and I thought, could we make a quilt of the county? Before COVID, Valerie was voluntarily teaching children in local schools how to knit. With that opportunity gone due to restrictions, she shifted her focus elsewhere. So I put a piece into the Clare Echo, asking if there were any people who did hand sewing who would be interested in taking part in the project. And I got a great response. So then I cut out 12 inch squares and I gave each person a square with a picture of what I wanted on the square, but their interpretation of it. And I've got 60 squares, 25 women and myself have made them, and uh, the talent is absolutely unbelievable. Some people work mornings, some work afternoons, or some look after the grandkids. We've, max, we've had four to five, once one day a week, stitching. And we've had great fun. Three of the women are with me from a previous project, so we knew each other. The previous project was no small feat. In 2018, Valerie, alongside 1,000 other knitters of the world, set the Guinness Book of World Record for the largest knitted blanket, non-crochet. Once assembled, that blanket was the size of four basketball courts and was later divided up and donated to charity. I suppose a little bit to bring people closer together in the communities, you know. Originally from Malaysia, Su Ling moved to Ireland 11 years ago and was delighted to find a community of Clare women with the same interest as her. My husband actually read it in the Clare Echo and he told me about it because he knows that I like to sew. I did two pieces, uh, one is on the Killaloo Bridge and the other one is on uh, Penabron. I did uh, what you call tropanto quilting, where uh, besides the actual quilting, you just stuff more fluff from behind the quilt, yeah. You have the normal kind of quilting and then you put extra polyester fibre behind it, yeah. 
I use lots of beads and sequins and uh, applique as well. What we focused on were things less popular, like we have the Cliffs of Moher and we have all the lovely beaches and all that, but then there are a lot of other beautiful areas with loads, with loads of castles and everything that people are all familiar with and they're promoted a lot. But there's lots of other nice places and sceneries that people aren't familiar with and we're very pleased that it's going to be on display now and people will have a lot more yeah, to look at and reason to visit our lovely county. I told my family about it, so my daughter was very interested in Concepta and so she's teaching in Innes and uh, she was interested in doing the Bauron and there's a kind that gets cracked, screve in a Bauron and she was very happy about that. I come from Liscana, which is a small fishing village in uh, West Clare, just at the base of the Cliffs of Moher. It was very enjoyable. Uh, it was great to meet all the people of different crafts from the county, uh, and it, it's a great project to work on. While the summer months have gone into pushing together each quilt patch, there's plans to have it exhibited for a short while. Shannon Airport have said they'll hang it in the arrival top when it's finished. The plan is it's going to be raffled. Um, I've set on three charities in County Clare for it, and hopefully make. 20,000 for the charities. These women are proud to have highlighted the beauty of the Banner County, one stitch at a time. And well done to all the women involved in the Clare Quilt.